Hi everyone, we are Yossi and Maxim from Melanox, now NVIDIA. And today we would like to present our approach to HTTP offload. This is the outline for today's talk. We will first start with a short overview on HTTP and its shortcomings. Then we will discuss our proposal to HTTP offload. And last, we will present the current status and known challenges. Let's first start with, an, uh, with a brief overview of HTTP. HTTP hierarchical token bucket is a queuing discipline, a queue disk. Specifically, it is a shaper for outgoing traffic, which provides a user with the ability to manage the available bandwidth and to divide it between applications in a controlled manner. Each of these green nodes corresponds to a traffic class, and each class has rate and seal configurations options among others. But these are the most important ones. Rate is the minimum bandwidth share or the guaranteed share that HTTP provides for that particular class. Seal, on the other hand, is the maximum traffic that is allowed for this class. And beyond this value, the traffic is throt throttled or shaped, sending a back pressure to the application, stopping it from sending more traffic. What is interesting about HTTP is its hierarchical structure. We can arrange the classes in a form of a tree where the leaf nodes perform the actual shaping and the inner nodes define the borrowing relationship between class siblings. For example, one leaf node can borrow tokens from a sibling up to its configure sealed, given of course that those tokens are not being used. However, HTTP has some drawbacks. Scored implementation does not scale well with the number of TXQs. In fact, HTTP was written well before multi-queue was introduced. More specifically, all TXQs points to the same instance of HTTP queue disk, which creates a synchronization point, missing the entire idea of multi-queue. Also, note that both traffic classification and the shaping algorithm take place under this lock. We would like to avoid this lock completely by handling the classification and offloading the shaping to the hardware. So to tackle the first one, we would like to move the classification out of the HTTP queue disk itself to the class act, act egress hook. This means that the user now needs to configure the filters in a slightly different way than the usual. For example, we would replace this filter with an equivalent one that writes the class directly to the SKB priority field, as in this example. This should work today without any code modification as HTTP examines the priority before performing the classification. And since the priority already defines the class, HTTP skips the, class the classification altogether. Now the classification can be performed in parallel as class act hook is lock free. Note that in our approach to HTTP offload, traffic classification is performed in software and is not meant to be offloaded. Now, even though the classification is out of the way, we still have the HTTP queue disk lock along the data path. In order to remove it, we suggest to modify HTTP to present itself as a multi queue queue disk in a similar way that MQ and MQ prior does. So we will have HTTP as a root queue disk, which will serve as an interface for the user to configure classes and query statistics. In addition, we allocate simple FIFO queue disk per TXQ is depicted in the following diagram. This way we remove HTTP code entirely from the data path and essentially pushing down all the heavy lifting of traffic shaping and tokens handling to the hardware. Going forward with this approach allows us to provide the user with HTTP semantics while maintaining wire speed performance for nowadays high speed SNICs. Thank you and Maxim will now continue with more detail. Maxim, it's all yours. I'm going to continue this presentation, I'm going to give you a more detailed look at the offload part. So basically, uh, we have uh, two parts here. Uh, first one relates to the control flow, and the second one is for data paths. For, for the control flow, um, we use NDO setup TC as an interface between HTTP queue disk and the driver. Um, with this interface, HTTP passes the QoS tree structure to the driver, 
and the driver mirrors in it in the NIC, as will be shown in the next slide. For, for the data path, as you already said, we eliminate locking by res registering uh, as a multi queue queue disk, and we create hardware send queues and backing leaf nodes in the QoS tree. Um, moving a classification to a stage uh, before and your select queue callback allows to keep to allows the driver to select the queue by class by traffic class, and uh, afterwards the NIC will perform all rate limiting and shaping algorithm itself. So this is the picture how uh, how we present. Uh, uh, this QS3 in the NIC, basically, as we can see, all the nodes are mirrored uh, using the uh, hardware objects of the NIC, and uh, each leaf class has a corresponding send queue uh, called SQ here, um, so that the different traffic classes go to separate hardware queues. Um, and basically, uh, this is the sequence uh, which steps the packet uh, goes through when it's being transmitted with HTTP offload. So the first step is that uh, we use the class act egress hook to set the SKB priority field to a leaf class ID. Um, based on the filters that the user can configure with TC. Uh, next, next step is uh, that packet goes to NGO select queue and the driver looks up that SKB priority field and picks the corresponding TX queue. Uh, as we remember, uh, each leaf class has uh, the backend SQ in hardware. And uh, of course, each SQ corresponds to a TXQ of a, of a net dev. So we pick the TXQ. Uh, the next step uh, is the queue disk step. Um, as we have uh, per queue, queue disks uh, in, in our offload implementation, we will take the queue disk of the corresponding TXQ. Uh, these are the FIFO queue disks that were mentioned by Yossi before, and we will enqueue our SKB into that corresponding uh, queue disk. Um, so the next step will obviously be dequeuing from that queue disk, and uh, the driver will get the SKB to be put into the hardware send queue. Then the rest is left to the NIC. It will uh, take the packet data and do the shaping according to the algorithm configuration, which, which was performed by NDO setup TC. And finally, it will transmit the packet. So we basically have uh, obvious advantages with this approach. Um, first of all, we eliminate the contention. That single log that was mentioned before we don't need to take it anymore. Um, the traffic classes uh, don't interfere with, with each other and uh, it allows for better throughput and actually it allows to scale well, uh, increasing the number of TXQs and traffic classes. Um, another advantage is that actually we don't do the algorithm on the CPU reducing CPU load and offloading that mechanism to, to the hardware, to the NIC. Um, of course, we have some challenges with this approach as uh, it's a relatively uh, new stage. Uh, so first uh, limitation that I can mention is that um, it's a, a slightly different behavior with the queue disks of leaf classes. So as we mentioned before, we create uh, simple FIFO queue disks uh, per each uh, TX queue. Um, and uh, 
you might wonder what if I uh, assign some different, some more complex QDisk other than uh, just P FIFO or similar. So here we actually have a difference in behavior because with software HTB, if we assign a QDisk uh, to some class, um, then it will be processed after the HTB lo logic. And with hardware offload, um, the HTB logic will be the last in the chain because it's in the hardware. So we'll have to run the logic of, uh, uh, of the, of some non-trivial QDisks uh, of the classes, we'll have to run that logic before. So this is yet to be investigated, but uh, it can uh, lead to some different behavior. Um, another tricky point is that we have to pre-allocate TXQs um, on actually creating the net dev. The driver has, has to do it. Uh, and those queues will be used to back uh, leaf classes of HTB when such classes are, are created and offloaded. And uh, uh, the thing is that um, we need to set the max amount of such queues uh, on the allocation stage and the kernel will create an array of uh, uh, netdev queue structs uh, according to the amount that we passed. Um, but later on, uh, we'll just uh, adjust the value of real num TXQs according to how many leaf classes we have. When some of them are created or deleted, the driver will uh, call this, the corresponding function in the kernel, and uh, it will also uh, create the hardware resources on demand um, another point is that uh, when some leaf class is deleted, um, it can lead to some gaps in numeration. So either we need to uh, adjust the numeration or to allocate new uh, class numbers, uh, like T TXQ numbers, uh, when a new class is created uh, to fill those gaps. Um, currently, um, we have it partially implemented uh, in two parts. Uh, first of all, we have some POC, POC uh, patches for the Mellanox MLX5 driver. It uses some uh, non-standard CSFS uh, interface for configuration, but uh, it allows uh, to basically test uh, the hardware offload functionality. The second part, uh, it's the RFC patch. It was posted to NetDev mailing list uh, um, recently. Um, it's showing the interface that we are going to use uh, for the upstream implementation uh, that is based on HTB and basically on the stuff that we just described. So, Thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. So we do have uh, some questions. Um, I'd like to start it with uh, the goal of eliminating the spin lock or spin lock contention. So um, I, th I think I had some questions on that, but let me, let me start with Eric's questions. Um, if all SKBs have the same priority, all packets will still use the, a single TXQ. So we're back to the problem of, of spin lock contention. The multi-queue doesn't help uh, unless we packets can be spread over many TXQs. So I guess uh, that's a question somehow. So how, how, does, how do we get around this? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. So that's right. Um, uh, currently, <clears throat> there is a uh, 100 queue per class. Uh, this is the first phase when we plan to um, introduce an API or something like that to to, uh, to allow the user to specify how many hardware queues or TX queues uh, he wants per, per class. And in the driver, we can use the hash function to um, 
spread the packets uh, over those uh, over those TXQs, queues, hardware queues. Okay, so um, let me follow up with uh, my question. So do we have to have HDB offload, full HDB offload here to relieve this bin lock contention or could we do this with um, the technique you just described, have, have multi-queue, but have the software actually handle uh, the different queues? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know exactly, but uh, it seems complicated taking into consideration the borrowing uh, between different classes. So avoiding a lock completely, um, maybe something like a thread running in the background and um, uh, dispatching the tokens or something like that. Um, yeah, I think I can add uh, something uh, to answer this question. Uh, so basically, the uh, classical HTB algorithm that is implemented uh, currently, it relies on that single lock. Um, I saw uh, recently there was some uh, submission of uh, uh, the scheduler called uh, LTB uh, to, to the mailing list. Uh, it attempts to solve uh, this this issue by using a, a different algorithm with uh, similar semantics to HTB, and uh, that algorithm runs in software, um, and uh, like uh, it can uh, it can do the similar stuff, but uh, as the implementation uh, is uh, different, uh, they avoid that single lock, but. Uh, um, I discovered issues with that uh, scheduler as well. Um, and uh, it actually has a single uh, thread that handles um, like all rate limits, which also might be um, a bottleneck. Um, Besides that, there are some issues with the current implementation that uh, have to be fixed. But uh, yeah, in, in general, if you invent uh, like some separate algorithm, uh, like LTB uh, tries to do, it could be possible to avoid this locking in software. Okay, uh, so next question, uh, this one's from Jamel. What about statistics? Are they reflected in software? And I guess we can, we can kind of uh, generalize this. So how transparent is this to the current uh, users of HTB. Yes, yeah, so so we we expose the will expose uh, statistics, um, and uh, if the user query any any statistics, we will delegate to the driver. The driver will delegate to the hardware, and we provide uh, some of the statistics. I'm not sure yet which we provide, but uh, I suppose most of them are reflected to to the user. And Jamel, Jamel's follow-up, I think, is probably a, a typical question. So when we offload to the device, it's gathering statistics. And then the question always becomes, how do we retrieve those statistics as a periodic or on demand? Uh, it's possible to be both. I mean, on demand or periodic uh, depends on the, on the needs. I mean, the... Okay, uh, next question. Does the hardware support a global rate limit rate limit per, for interface uh, for the interface? And what about borrowing between classes? Uh, so borrowing is supported uh, in the same in similar manner as HDB uh, in the same way. And uh, as far as I remember, I think we support we do support a global rate limiting, uh, and this is configured using the IP, I think uh, max rate or something. Yeah, actually, you can just set uh, the max rate limit to the root node of of the ORC OS tree. So uh, this will give you the necessary effect. Okay, uh, does it make sense to put the logic outside the driver so that all drivers could benefit from it? So should yes. we make the uh, common APIs for this? 
uh, we are planning to put the common API part uh, into the HTTP disk, and uh, it will have an interface uh, with the driver. And of course, the driver will have uh, to contain uh, parts which are hardware specific, um, like talking to the hardware to offload the three nodes, uh, set all the limits. This is all hardware specific and belongs to the driver. All the rest is uh, common to all drivers and uh, it's placed into uh, scheduler HTB. Okay, and then we have a question about um, where the performance gains are coming from. So other than the interface global lock, how much CPU time does this save? So it's a good question. So let me step it up a little bit. So the obvious question here is, do we get all the savings from the locking saving or is it the actual processing of HDB or what, what, or what combination is it for performance gains? Um, well, not sure that I got the question. Uh, so, um, uh, is it about like how much CPU is saved uh, besides uh, like eliminating the global log? Um, I am not sure we are ready to answer this because uh, in order to do this comparison, we need to compare the offload at HTB to something in software that uh, somehow eliminates global lock but doesn't offload uh, the algorithm itself. So the closest uh, alternative to this is LTB, uh, but like it's a different algorithm compared to HTB. And uh, uh, like as, as I said, we experienced some problems in, uh, in running it properly. So uh, yeah, I'm not ready to, uh, to give such numbers. It's complicated to fetch them to measure. Okay, so I, I think this is, um, personally, I think it's a critical question. Uh, this might be a good topic for um, either a side meeting or uh, at a happy hour. I'm, I'm sure that some, there, there should be some who have thoughts on, on how to evaluate this. Uh, obviously, if, if somehow there's a way to get all the benefits without putting the full HDB in, implementation inside the hardware, um, that, you know, almost by definition would be preferable. Uh, but uh, but if, if we can show that there's some intangible or inherent benefits of doing that, then, you know, by all means. Okay, so I'm looking through, see if there's any more questions. Why not map uh, class flow ID semantics to hardware queue? So Jamel, uh, do you wanna give a little more uh, background on this question? It's yours. No, I mean that uh, today we actually have ID identifiers for each queue. Uh, when I add a rule, I say class ID one column two, and that plays well in the hierarchy of HDB. Does that make sense? Um, if not, we can take it off to happy hour. I can, I can, I can say more there. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm not sure I got uh, the question correctly, but uh, yeah, the classification happens. You you put uh, the class ID to which you can you should uh, like you want to uh, classify the packet, and uh, there is a mapping between uh, traffic classes and uh, the corresponding hardware queues. To right, and you, but but you mentioned you're using SKB priority. That's why I was kind of uh, maybe curious as to. Yes. Whether that was the right semantic or, because priority could also mean something else, right? It's, you, you need a priority for the HQ, which is reflected in the SKB priority. Whereas the Q selection is reflected by the class ID. I'm not sure how we're doing the time, but I, we could talk about this after. Okay, great. Okay, uh, is, is it supported on VF as well? Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't know if it's supported uh, directly on, on the VF. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. But the, just to mention, the, the, 
the use case or the, the use case here is to uh, run on, on top of the PF without SRV, just for uh, local locally generated traffic. That's the use case. But maybe it's uh, also possible to enhance it to um, work on top of uh, VF. Okay, uh, if there is no more questions, uh, let's move on. So thank you very much.